Hey, how you doing, math students? So, I'm wondering, I have these books, these books right over here. They're pretty good books. I, I recommend them. And uh, you can see there's a, they're on the shelf, and uh, there's 16 of them there. And what I'm wondering is, uh, I'm not quite sure how to order these books, and I want to try some different orders. And what I'm thinking is, what if I tried every single order of those 16 books? And I'm pretty fast at ordering books, so let's say uh, <clears throat> I can come up with a new order every second. You know, 16 books. Doesn't look that many. Uh, I, I can crank this out in an hour, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not an hour, not an afternoon, not even remotely close. So let's look why. So let's simplify things first. Uh, let's say that instead of having 16 books, let's say I have two books. I have an algebra book and a geometry book. So how many different orders can I come up with those two books? I think we can all agree. Algebra, then geometry. Geometry, then algebra. Done. Okay. Two different orders. Good. And then I pick up a trigonometry book. So how many different orders can I come up with these three books? An algebra book? a geometry book, and a trigonometry book. Well, I'll put, uh, I'll put the trig book first, and then I'll order my algebra and geometry books those two, two different ways. And then I'll put my uh, algebra book first, and I'll order my geometry and trigonometry book those two ways. And then I'll put the geometry book first, and I'll order my two, uh, my algebra book and my trig book. And those are the six different ways that I can order three books. Okay. Then somebody gives me a calculus book. Now what? Hmm. Well, I can put my calculus book first and then come up with all the different orders of my algebra book, my geometry book, and my trig book. And I know what those are. That's going to be six orders. So six orders. And then I'll put something else first. Let's say I'll put the algebra book first. And I have the other three books. So the number of orders I have of those three books is going to be six orders. And now you see what's happening. Uh, with the geometry book, it'll also be six orders. And with the trig book, it'll also be six orders. So how many total different orders do we have? Six times four, which is 24. Okay, so two different ways to order two books, six different ways to order three books, and 20 different ways to or 24 different ways to order four books. And some of y'all are thinking, yeah, these are just factorials. Yes, you're right. These are factorials. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. And the way we write this is two with an exclamation point. That does not say two. It says two factorial. Okay. Two factorial. All right. And two factorial is two. And three factorial is six. And four factorial is 24. And generally the way people define factorial is they say you multiply that number times all the integers, all the positive integers below it. Okay? So basically 2 factorial is going to be 2 uh, times 1. And 3 factorial is going to be 3 times 2 times 1. And 4 factorial is going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is the most common way of uh, of, of defining what a factorial is. It's not the way that I like to do it though, because I like to look at this property right here, that five factorial is going to be five times just four factorial, right? Five times four times three times two times one. So that's five times four factorial. And six factorial is going to be six times five factorial. So let's see, I guess I should figure out what 5 factorial is. It's 5 times uh, 24, which is 120. 120. And 6 factorial is going to be 6 times 120, which is, what's that, 720? 
And I'm going to stop there because if I keep going, I'm going to make some arithmetic mistakes and uh, it's going to be embarrassing. So you can see the pattern that goes on. So, uh, so what we're seeing is that n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial. Well, if that's the case, then n minus 1 factorial is n factorial divided by n, right? Okay, well, then that means I can figure out what 1 factorial is. 1 factorial is 2 factorial divided by 2, and 2 factorial is 2, so that's 2 divided by 2, which is just 1. That makes sense. How many ways can you order one book on a shelf? One, okay. And zero factorial, you can even figure that out. Use the same, use this property right here. It's going to be one factorial divided by one, which is one over one, which is one. And again, how many ways can you order zero books on a bookshelf? Well, it's a empty bookshelf, and so there it is, your one empty bookshelf. Okay. Let's try to go one step further. Negative one factorial is going to be zero factorial over zero, and that is undefined, okay? Because you can't divide by zero. All right, so what we find is we can define the factorial function for any integer zero and above. So, like I said, the way that I like to define factorials is by saying, 0 factorial equals 1, and n factorial equals n times n minus 1 factorial for n greater than or equal to 1. Actually, let me put it this way. For n, for all n in the set of positive integers. It's a kind of a funky looking z there with a double line on it. Uh, and that plus there means positive integers. So one, two, three, four, also known as the natural numbers. Okay? That's how I define it. it. It's equivalent to the other way. Okay? They mean the exact same thing. So now let's get back to those 16 books. Okay. So one thing you can do is you can say, well, shoot, I'm just going to grab a, a calculator. Did I bring a calculator with me? Shoot, I don't have a calculator. If I did, I would grab my calculator, I'd put in 16, I'd look around to see where the, uh, where the factorial function is, and uh, on my calculator, you, uh, I have a TI-84, and I think you hit the math button, and then you have to arrow over to probability, because we use factorials a lot in probability, and you'll see the little exclamation point there. So you hit uh, uh, 16 factorial, and what you get is a huge number, and just extremely big number. It's like something times 10 to the 23rd power or something. It's just absolutely enormous. And you have to ask yourself, uh, how did it get that big? Well, let's go back to ordering books on a bookshelf. <clears throat> one book, we can do it in one second. Two books, two seconds. Three books, remember you take the two and, and multiply times three. So six seconds. Four books, 24 seconds. Again, this is, this is easy. I've finished in less than half a minute. Five books, I'm going to have to take those 24 seconds and multiply by five, which puts me up to 120 seconds, but that's okay. That's only two minutes. So, cool. Five, five books, I'm only, only going up to 16. I'm almost a third of the way there, and it's only taking me two minutes. Easy. Six books, well, it's going to be two minutes times six, so it's going to be 12 minutes. Seven books is that 12 minutes times seven, which is getting me up to uh, 84 minutes, which is actually an hour and 24 minutes. Ooh, that's starting to take up some of my afternoon there. Uh, eight books is an hour and 24 minutes times eight, which comes out to uh, 11 hours. And uh, so this is eight books. I'm at 11 hours and... 12 minutes. Okay, so nine books 
is going to be nine times that, which is actually going to be four days. Uh, four days and how long? Four days, four hours, and 48 minutes. Now you see what's happening, okay? So the time it takes to order nine books, if I can do one order every second, is already four days, four hours, and 48 minutes. And that's without any sleep. That's every single second. Add a tenth book, and it's gonna be 10 times this. What's that? That's 42 days. Add an 11, 11th book, and it's gonna be 11 times those 42 days, which comes out to 462 days, which is over a year. 12 books. Multiply that over a year times 12, and what you, what you end up with is, let's see, for 12 books, it's gonna be, I believe that's 15 years and, uh, and two months. 13 books, okay, fine, take that. Multiply times 13, and what do you get? A lot longer than I'm gonna live. 13, uh, 13 books is 197 years. I think we can say with pretty decent probability that none of us are gonna live 197 years. So this is a bad project for a single person to work on, uh, ordering 13 books. It's gonna take you 197 years to do it if you, have, if, you, if you do one order every second. 14 books, no problem. Just take that 197 and multiply times 14 and you get up to, uh, uh, what is it, like 2,760 years. <laughs> so you see what's happening. 15 books, well, multiply that times 15 and you get up to over 40,000 years. Oh yeah, over 40,000 years, no problem. So if you just start ordering books, if you have 15 books, and if you start ordering them uh, like about 10,000 years before we started agriculture, you might be done around now. Good. And then of course, I had 16 books on my bookshelf. So now you have to take that and multiply times 16, which, which gets you up to uh, 663,000 years, which is significantly longer than we are aware that humans have been around. So isn't that incredible? 16 books on a bookshelf and the number of different orders you have, if you can do one per second, is going to take you 663,000 years. So what that tells you is factorials get big really, really fast. Okay, that's your intro to factorials. Hope it's helpful. See you at the next video. Bye-bye.